Hello, I'm Justin. Tiger and I are excited about tonight's bedtime story. It's all about a very unusual family. It's called My Family is a Zoo and is written by K.A. Gerard with pictures by Emma Dodd. My daddy has an elephant. He got when he was three. It travels with us everywhere. It's quite a sight to see. <laughs> Me, I have my big brown bear. Surprise, his name is Teddy. <laughs> and whatever the adventure, he is there, waiting and ready. <laughs> Today, we're going for a drive. <laughs> to where, I cannot say. We should arrive by lunchtime with some stops along the way. Meet my sister and the whale that she swims with in the ocean. <laughs> it's big and blue and blubbery and smells of suntan lotion. Here comes my older brother with his purple dinosaur. <laughs> they may not seem ferocious, but you should hear them roar. <laughs> Look, my cousin's kangaroo has a switch that makes it hop. Perhaps the switch is broken. The hopping just won't stop. Whoop, whoop, boing, 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 whoa. There's my uncle and his penguin, which he once left on the bus. It travelled round for months before returning home to us. My auntie owns a monkey <laughs> with sticky out ears. She bought it on her holiday. She just loves her souvenirs. Grandma's brought her bunny whose coat is bald and worn. It's been loved and hugged and cuddled since the day that she was born. Grandpa's got his tiger, <laughs> who once slept in their bed till Grandma put her foot down. Now it lives in Grandpa's shed. Even Boomer has a puppy. Whoop! Oh, <laughs> that he carries in his jaws. And every time he goes to sleep, he hugs it with his paws. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> now we're all together with barely room to spare. Can't wait to see if Mummy likes these brand new polar bears. We make a strange menagerie as we pile out two by two. We're not so much a family, more a family zoo. At last, we have arrived. Shh. Me, Ted, and all the others. And just why have we come here? To meet my baby brothers. Whew. What a big and busy family. Just imagine taking a drive with an elephant in the car. <laughs> it must be quite a squeeze. Well, now it's time for you to squeeze into your bed, cuddle your favourite toy animal and sleep tight. I'll see you again very soon for another bedtime story. Night, night. Ooh. There you go, Teddy. Hello, I'm Justin. I'm telling Teddy all about my day. Do you have a friend you love to talk to? <laughs> Tonight's story is all about a little girl with a very special, sparkly friend. It's called Laura Starr and is written and illustrated by Klaus Baumgart. I wish I had a friend, sighed Laura as she gazed out of her bedroom window. Someone special to share all my secrets with. But there was no one listening. Only the distant stars that winked and glittered like tiny jewels in the night sky. Suddenly, something caught Laura's eye. A streak of silver came whirling and twisting through the darkness towards her. She gasped 
as it spun past her window, so close she could almost touch it. Something wonderful, something magical was happening. Laura quickly put on her dressing gown and slippers and hurried downstairs. Outside, on the shadowy pavement, <gasps> lay a little star, fizzing sparks and colours like a giant sparkler. <gasps> You're beautiful, Laura whispered as she tiptoed towards it. A point of the star had broken, snapped off when it hit the ground. Don't worry. Laura told it, as she gently carried it back indoors. I'll soon make you better. And up in her bedroom, she managed to stick the little star together again. Later, Laura told the little star all her secrets, and it seemed to sparkle more brightly than ever. As if it was listening, as if it understood. And as Laura drifted off to sleep, she knew she'd found a special friend at last. When Laura woke the next morning, the space on her pillow was empty. The little star was gone. Laura was desperate. She searched under the quilt and scrabbled through drawers and cupboards. She climbed high to the top of the wardrobe and crawled low beneath the bed. But it was no good. She couldn't find the little star anywhere. Laura felt cold and empty, as if all the light had drained out of her. Surely the wonderful little star hadn't been only a dream. When Laura came home from the playground, Mum and Dad tried their best to cheer her up. How about your favourite jelly? said Dad. Don't you like my funny hat? asked Mum. Laura couldn't answer, couldn't tell them why she was so sad. Her star had gone forever and she hadn't even said goodbye. That night, as Laura climbed wearily up to bed, she saw a strange glow flickering from her room. Hardly daring to hope, she pushed the door open. The sudden blaze of light was dazzling. The little star was back, just where she'd left it, shining like a thousand diamonds. At first, Laura could only stand and stare. Then suddenly, joyfully, she ran towards it. I know what happened, she cried. Stars only come out at night. You must have been there all the time and I just couldn't see you. I should have known you wouldn't leave me without saying goodbye. Laura and the little star had a wonderful time. They played games and did tricks and Laura read it, her favourite book. But Laura slowly noticed something. The little star began to feel cold in her hand, as if it was fading away. Laura stroked the little star gently with her fingertips as it grew colder still. She felt the longing in it and suddenly she understood why her little star was fading. Laura chose her four best balloons and carefully tied them to the little star. Be safe, she whispered as she opened the window and let go of the strings. A and be happy! Slowly, the balloons drifted up to the darkness and the little star twinkled at Laura as it grew smaller and smaller until at last it joined the other stars in the midnight sky. Laura didn't feel sad anymore for her star was back where it belonged. Each night when she went to bed, she could whisper her secrets into the darkness, knowing that the little star was somewhere out there listening. How wonderful that Laura's star is happily back in the sky with all the other stars and Laura and her star can still see each other every night. <laughs> Why don't you look out of your bedroom window and see if you can see any stars tonight and give them a wave. 
Night, night. I'll see you soon for another bedtime story. Now, Teddies, are you all feeling cosy? Excellent. <laughs> oh, hello. I'm just in. Now, all the toys are feeling sleepy and are snuggled up ready for tonight's bedtime story. Are you feeling sleepy yet? Oh, are you sure? <laughs> I think I just saw a yawn. No, maybe not. Well, I want you to count how many times you yawn while listening to tonight's bedtime story. It's called I Dare You Not To Yawn and is written by Aileen Boudreau with illustrations by Serge Bloch. Yawns are sneaky. They can creep up on you when you least expect them. There you are, minding your own business, building the tallest block tower in the history of the universe or dressing up the cat, meow, when suddenly your arms stretch up, your eyes squish tight, your mouth opens wide, your tongue curls back and... <gasps> A yawn pops out. Well, next thing you know, you're being sent upstairs to put your pyjamas on. Pyjamas lead to bedtime stories. Bedtime stories lead to the sleepy time song. And sleepy time songs lead to goodnight hugs and kisses. Before you know it, you're tucked into bed, snug as a bug, and wondering, how did I get here? So, if you're not ready to go to bed, follow these tips and do not yawn. <laughs> if someone else yawns, like your baby brother or your big sister or the dog, <coughs> ah, look away! Yawns are like colds, they spread. Stay away from huggable stuffed animals soft, cosy pyjamas and your favourite blankie because these can make you feel snugly. Avoid bedtime stories about sleepy baby animals like tiger cubs arching their backs in one last stretch, their eyes squished tight and their tongues curled back. Or you might start to feel stretchy too. Don't sing sleepy time songs about twinkling stars or <laughs> barring sheep, especially the counting kind. One sheep, two sheep. <laughs> and whatever you do, don't think of a a droopy-eyed baby <laughs> orangutan holding its long arms out for a hug from its mama. <laughs> its little mouth forming a, a perfect... <laughs> Uh-oh! If you try all these things, but a yawn still creeps up and grabs hold of you, quick, cover your mouth <laughs> to keep it from escaping. Because if your arms stretch up, your eyes squish tight, your mouth opens wide, your tongue curls back, and a yawn pops out. Oh, then off to bed you'll go. <laughs> See, I told you. Yawns are sneaky. <laughs> How many times did you yawn? Well, I didn't yawn even once. Yep. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Whoops. I think it's time to snuggle down like our friends here and yawn ourselves to sleep. I'll see you soon for another bedtime story. Night night. Sleepy heads. <laughs> Ooh, and another. Hello, I'm 
Justin. Wow, look at all of these parcels. Hey, did you send them to me? Uh, no. Well, I wonder who sent them. Wait a second. This parcel has a label on it. Shall I read it? OK. It says, Dear Justin. <laughs> well, that's me. And then it says, Open me. Shall I open the parcel? <laughs> OK, how exciting. Ribbit. Ribbit. Whoa. wonder what that is. Ribbit. <gasps> wow, look, everyone. Ribbit. Boing. It's a frog. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> a jumpy frog. Boing. <laughs> Aha. I think I know where these parcels came from. They came from the zoo. Tonight's story is called Dear Zoo. And it's written and illustrated by Rod Campbell. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. They sent me an... <gasps> Elephant! Oh, wow! He was too big. I sent him back. So, they sent me a... A giraffe. <laughs> he was too tall. I sent him back. So, they sent me a... A lion. <laughs> he was too fierce. I sent him back. <laughs> so, they sent me a... Camel! <laughs> he was too grumpy. I sent him back. <laughs> so, they sent me a... Snake. He was too scary. I sent him back. So they sent me a monkey. <laughs> He was too naughty. <laughs> I sent him back. So they sent me a ribbit, ribbit, a frog. He was too jumpy. Ribbit, ribbit. I sent him back. Boing. <whistles> so, they thought very hard and sent me a... Ruff, 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 ruff. <gasps> Puppy! Ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> oh, he was perfect! I kept him. <laughs> ruff, ruff. Oh, what a wonderful story. And look, a puppy. <laughs> oh, 
a sleepy puppy. Are you sleepy after all that animal fun? <sighs> wow, I'm sleepy too. Join me again soon for another bedtime story. Night night. Oh, hello, I'm Driver Justin, and this is the CBeebies Bedtime Story Bus. <laughs> Would you like to hear a story? Oh, fantastic. Well, let's fasten our seatbelts, <laughs> sit back and relax. Now, tonight's story is called The Bus is for Us. It's written by Michael Rosen with pictures by Gillian Tyler. I really like to ride my bike. <laughs> I like to go far in our car. <laughs> when it starts to rain, I like the train. But best is the bus. The bus is for us. I do, of course, like riding <laughs> a horse. <laughs> I like to float in a little boat. I like trips in big ships. But best is the bus. The bus is for us. Sometimes I wish I could ride on a fish. <laughs> if I was allowed, I'd sit on a cloud. I'd be all right up high on a kite. But best is the bus. The bus is for us. I'd love to play in an open sleigh. Ho! Fly to the moon in a hot air balloon. Or, for a dare, ride on a bear. But even so, the bus is best. Best is the bus. That's because the bus is for us. <laughs> Have you ever had a ride on a bicycle? Ding, ding. Or <coughs> on a horse? I'm sure we've all been on a bus because the bus is the best. <laughs> 
join me again soon for another bedtime story. Night, night. <laughs> Next stop, Sleepyville. <laughs> Watch more on BBC iPlayer.